Roger Federer is in the spotlight yet again, but this time the fans are really taken aback. Even though it's been days since Roger Federer's bid farewell to the tennis world, the emotions are still fresh in our hearts and minds. An end to a great tennis career spanning 24 years. That's obviously shaking. In this video, we're reminiscing over his unbelievable skill moments. Let's find out the top 10 RF proved he's the best. First things first, Roger blew our minds at Wimbledon in 2001 with his spectacular performance. We know that Roger's breathtaking strokes and rallies made the tennis world gasp, but did we acknowledge him as a junior player? Well, yes, he's been blowing the audience's mind since the day he stepped into the game. Going back in time, the 19-year-old Roger looked the top-seeded Sampras into the eyes. And guess what? The fourth round saw him get the better of Sampras in five sets. That marked the central movement of the champion's life. Federer was faced with the world's number one, a four-time defending victor, yet instead of defeat, Federer became the epitome of tenacity and resolved to mount another counterattack, and the all-England club fans saw the beginning of greatness. As it turned out, that's where the major breakthrough of who we now know as the king of tennis began. Next, we witnessed Federer conquering a brand new territory in 2003. Sampras retired in 2002, but there was more Federer had to conquer. It was time for him to defeat another American tennis icon, Andre Agassi. If you've had the chance to see him play, you know that was indeed a really tough nut for Federer to crack. Before the Tennis Masters World Cup 2003, the two crossed paths thrice, where Agassi managed to dodge his way out every time. But things took quite a turn in 2003 when Roger Federer went god mode. That's when he defeated the Grand Slam champion in the group stage and again in the championship match. In the first match, Roger sought atonement by overturning a deficit to win. In the second game, Agassi stood little chance against him, and he was quick to win his Grand Slam singles title. That's where fans witnessed true brilliance. That too in two different ways. Yes, Agassi was toward the end of his career, but consecutive defeats were the last thing on fans' minds. Here, the spark didn't take long to ignite, and people were quick to rest their hopes on the shoulders of Federer. Turns out, fans had little idea what was going to happen in 2007. Federer had made a name for himself as a top athlete by 2007, but then the king had already won four Wimbledon titles. Together with medals in the Australian Open and the US Open, but here's what you're certainly not ready to listen to. Rafael Nadal emerged as a threat to Roger's Grand Slam career. That's when the seeds of tennis's most thrilling rivalry were sown. Remember the rival pair you've often heard of? Well, this is where it stems from. It was in 2007 that the two finally met where the Superman, King Roger, was just a couple of inches away from becoming the third Wimbledon men's single champion. But don't forget, he was up against the King of Clay, Nadal, the real chink in the armor for him. Judging from this, it's pretty obvious that now was the hardest time for Federer. In fact, for both the opponents. Three hours and 45 minutes felt like an eternity as the best tennis players in the world fought their way out. A mesmerizing display of transcendental greatness. Just what would perfectly put together the moment. And finally, the scales bounced back and forth before finally falling on Federer's side, who won millions of hearts yet again. However, success in sports isn't eternal, as the Swiss master learned later in 2009. While his victory at Wimbledon in 2007 solidified his domination, it wasn't long-lived. But the king wasn't quick to admit that. On the flip side, Nadal continued his winning streak, and in August 2008, he finally ousted Roger as the world's top player. Not just that, Nadal won the Australian Open, French Open, and Wimbledon, while Federer lost five straight matches against him. The Spaniard, Nadal, sought to continue his win streak. If you've been an RF fan before, you'd know how it was no short of a calamity for him. But of course, Raj wasn't going to let it slip anytime soon. The two were to cross swords in the 2009 Madrid Open, but the circumstances went ugly real quick. The tournament shifted to clay court instead of hard court, which meant that Nadal now had another edge. As you might have guessed, the odds really were stacked against Raj. Now, he had to overcome all the odds while on a downward trajectory, which he did. It was Federer's first championship in 2009, and it was the public announcement of the Masters comeback that cut across the rivalry. Next, in the 2009's French Open, a year worth recording in the books. If you thought the Madrid Open was all for 2009, then you may be wrong. 
Federer's performances in that year go well beyond that. Yes, he won many titles by 2009, namely the Australian Open, US Open, and Wimbledon, but the real challenge still awaited him, the French Open. It always remained elusive and kept him from winning over the career Grand Slam. In 2009, it was pretty evident that another duo like the Federer and Nadal was forthcoming. Robin Soderling of Sweden, who had never won a Grand Slam, pulled off the tournament's biggest upset. This caused the tennis community to come to a complete standstill. Frankly, that did upset Raj and his fans a bit. All they could do then was to hope. Hope for the best. This is gonna amaze you to hear, but no perturbation got in the way. And guess what? Federer dominated the first set and won 6-1. Though things did take a turn in the second set, King Raj managed to secure a 6-4 in the third set. That's when the Swiss King finally claimed his first French Open championship. Doesn't that sound pretty dope? The Swiss King's career saw more wonders in 2009. Here's what they are. If you're not sure whether 2009 held more fate for Fred, then let us jog your memory a bit. Besides finally accomplishing his career Grand Slam, he became known as the most booming tennis player in the history of the Grand Slams. Of course, that meant more responsibilities rested on his shoulders now. The audience looked up to him. He already had equaled the greatness of idol Pete Sampras, and now was the time to outperform it. Now was the time to overcome some new hurdles. Yes, you heard that right. Andy Roddick presented Roger Federer with another formidable rivalry. Four hours and 17 minutes of intense endurance testing between the two finalists. Another time, it resulted in Federer's victory. That was probably the longest ever men's single final in terms of games played. Following up, who knew the 2012 Wimbledon would make the Swiss meet new heights of success? Yes, it's true that none of us thought about that before the king continued to convince us of his superiority. In the late 2000s, a Serbian quickly rose to the top of the global rankings. Obviously, that meant obstruction of the Federer-Nadal period. By the time it was 2010, Novak Djokovic had worked to establish his goal to rule. And yes, he had no interest in taking second place. Well, that posed some serious threat to Roger's era. The odds, too, were evidently in Serbs' favor when the two met in the semifinal in the 2012 Wimbledon. Here came the last thing the audience wanted to be faced with. He had defeated Federer in all of the previous six encounters, who had not achieved a Grand Slam since the Australian Open in 2010. Despite being in his 30s, Raj was quick to show the world why his tennis career was far from over. History repeated itself, and even when he was up against an unstoppable force, he prevailed in the match. That's when we knew the king was back in the game. Let's look at 2016. The Swiss king never left any stone unturned. Now was the right time to gauge his brilliance. Since winning Wimbledon in 2012, Federer partly faded into obscurity, with injuries being a significant factor. We're sure you can guess that Fred was a veteran now. A few weeks before his 35th birthday, Wimbledon took place, and this time, the title wasn't his. That's when people guessed a decline in the Swiss's career. Just like the old times, Fred proved the world wrong once again, just like his emerging years. Although he didn't win the title, the world gained just as much knowledge from his loss as it did from his triumph. Next up came the 2018 Australian Open, another year where the king proved himself. Roger Federer continued to impress the world, and his fans were totally astounded when he won the Wimbledon and Australian Open. Whoa, his tally rose to 19 here. As the first male tennis player to win 20 Grand Slams, he made history. Then came another full-on match. Federer, who was 36 at the time, set a record for the oldest player to win a major singles championship since 1972. Finally, the 2019 ATP Finals before the god of tennis bowed out. Among other notable victories, the one over Novak Djokovic really stood out. Yes, Federer's victory over Djokovic at the age of 38 really was a monument to his illustrious career. And that's a wrap for this video. Do you think there will ever be a legend with a similar spirit as that of Roger Federer? Let us know your thoughts. We'll see you in the next one, and until then, bye.